This is for my manga fans out there. I love me some manga. I like it more than I like American comics because it's got a greater variety of stories, art styles, and actually has passion poured into it. Some manga are just thrown together, but usually the mangaka or creators actually care about their work. The other thing is that they've got steep competition. For every idea that you've got, there's 10 other comic books roaming around just like it, sometimes in the same magazine. If you slip, even just a little, somebody will step right up on you and take your place. That level of competition means that manga artists really work hard to get their books out on time and to get and stay popular. These guys end up working themselves into serious health conditions. That's how intense it gets. Compare that with American comics where a Twitter troll is rewarded by the industry for harassing, threatening, and doxing people. It shows the difference in what happens when you care about comics versus caring about holding the right opinions. And that brings me to Shonen Jump. Back in December 2018, Viz announced that they have a new subscription service for Shonen Jump magazine available on their site. For only $2 a month, subscribers would get access to 100 chapters a day and up to 10,000 overall chapters found in the Shonen Jump digital vault. That's a ton of manga and it comes out to about $24 a year. That's not bad at all. It would take thousands of dollars to purchase all the available content. It's worth it just for the backlog, but there's an added bonus access to new weekly manga as it's published in Japan. So whatever they've got running in the official version of Shonen Jump in Japan is translated and made available to subscribers. The point of this is to get around people reading pirated manga. It's really surprising though that it took them this long to figure this out. Somehow a bunch of people who know Japanese and English could buy a copy of Weekly Jump, scan it, translate it into English, and have it up on the site within 12 hours of the book coming out, but the official translation would wait until the volumes were released which is usually every 11 weeks, and then wait as long as 18 months to bring that out here. Perfect example, the Naruto releases. At the height of the series popularity, 2005 to 2010, there were two year gaps between the Japanese volume release and the English translation. That's about 100 chapters worth of story that American fans want to read that Shonen Jump and Viz were just sitting on. Do you think we're going to wait two years to find out what we can find out in 20 seconds? So then, they started releasing multiple volumes a month to catch up, but once they did, they went back to the 6-8 to eight month gap between the releases. This is happening during the volumes where Sasuke and Itachi are throwing down. Do you think anybody is waiting almost a year to find out what happens? Hell no. And this is just one series. Add this up and it becomes a problem financially, and the same thing was happening with anime. People were pirating it because it took forever to get the licensing. Eventually, the Japanese companies realized that they should just simulcast it, but it took them almost a decade to figure that out. So that's why this subscription service exists. It's to get people to pay for the current lineup and for some older stuff. When you sign up, you get access to about 80 different manga where you can read them from the beginning. This is called the Digital Vault. You've got the obvious ones like Dragon Ball, One Piece, Naruto, Bleach, My Hero Academia, One Punch Man, and then you have stuff like All You Need Is Kill, Death Note, Blue Exorcist, Black Clover, Boruto, and Promised Neverland. You've also got some cool ones like Dr. Stone, Ronin Kenshin, Platinum Inn, and Claymore. There's plenty to check out. You can also see what other books they've published. Some of them are available for digital purchases along with physical copies, while some are only available as physical copies. I like that they show you everything they've got, but I don't like that they don't make it clear what is and isn't available to read with a subscription. When you sign in, you see this option to read, and it makes it seem like that's where you go. Nah. That just takes you to a listing of all the books they published. You need to click on Shonen Jump and then scroll down the page. You'll see all the latest chapters listed, and then below are all the manga you can read with your subscription. There really should be a link that says Digital Vault just to make that clear because I thought I could check out any manga they published, not just these 80 particular books. Also, this access only applies to Shonen Jump titles. Viz licenses manga from other Japanese publishers, manga like Full Metal Alchemist, so you may see that listed in the read section, but you can't actually check it out because it's not published by Shonen Jump. If you're looking to read some manga, check this out. Keep in mind that these stories are geared towards young boys, usually between 10 to 14 years old, depending on the title. So don't let that be a turnoff. Plenty of women and girls love these stories, so if something catches your eye, give it a try. One basic rule with manga is that the initial chapter is usually written like a one-shot, just in case it tanks. So you want to go through a couple of chapters before deciding to drop a book because the story and tone can change that fast. That can also happen with a number of series. I'm looking at you, Reborn. Katekyo Hitman Reborn is not part of the digital vault, but it was published here by Viz. 
in the first eight volumes is basically a comedy and then suddenly gets serious. I mean, we're talking space balls to Empire Strikes Back right before Luke gets his hand cut off serious. All of them don't do this, but just be aware that some of these books have slow starts or tone changes. If it seems like something is not working for you, give it a little time. It may actually become something you like. If anybody signed up for the service, let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Thanks for listening.